In 2004, as your head students have said, the Royal Society is preparing for another transit, which will happen on the 8th of June, and this time it's going to be best seen from the United Kingdom. <clears throat> so the Royal Society uh, and the Freemasons have decided to challenge schools right across New Zealand to make videos related to the transit. 72 schools en entered, including a number of your near neighbours, and in the end, 10 finalists were selected. So at this point, I'd like to invite the team that represented Pakarani in this competition, Sandy Tsai, Sarini Naidu, and Redi Gutta, with their teacher Gordon Lawrence, pleased to come forward onto the stage to a huge round of applause. From the ten finalists, three teams who would win the grand prize, which is a two weeks, all expenses paid trip to the United Kingdom at the time of the transit in June. This is a fantastic prize. They're going to go to some amazing places. They're going to meet some wonderful, wonderful people. And I am now thrilled to announce that the, this team from Pakaranga is one of the three winning teams who will leave on the 27th of May for the United Kingdom. So here they are on the... So the great adventure was underway. Our guide, Debbie Lawrence, gave the team a quick tourist view of London. In just a few days, we would be seeing the actual transit of Venus. But what exactly is a transit? Every 120 years, the planet comes between the Earth and the Sun. This astonishing phenomenon is a transit. It has allowed us to find the holy grail of astronomy, the astronomical unit. Galileo and Kepler, two remarkable scientists, carved out the first steps of astronomy. In 1639, Jeremiah Horrocks built upon these foundations. Simply by using a one and a half inch refracting telescope, Horrocks calculated the planet's angular size, orbital velocity and transitional path. In doing so, he proved that Venus did move in an elliptical orbit, according to Kepler's third law. It is just after 5 a.m. Astronomers arrive to get their gear into place for the great event, the transit of Venus. This site is right beside the house from which Jeremiah Horrocks made the first observation in 1639. Oh yeah, there she blows. There she is. There she is. The black speck is Venus. Interest from the media is high with various channels doing live updates throughout the day. 
cloud. I mean, it was a bit cloudy here this morning, but considering it was actually raining about an hour ago, we're counting our lucky stars that you can see anything at all. And as you can see, the sun's coming out, it's getting brighter all the time, and we're really optimistic for second contact. Stop recording, good for me, okay for sound? Our Royal Society team manager, Marilyn Head, adjusts the focus of a solar scope. These simple cardboard units gave a good view of the transit. The position of Venus's projected image will vary according to the optical design of the telescope being used. Venus using a leather-bound telescope. He was working as a tutor for the Stones family here at Carr House, an unlikely setting for such an astronomical discovery. This is the original room in Carr House from which Jeremiah Horrocks made that historic first observation in 1639. The main difference is that this is a modern telescope. And hanging on the wall is this much copied picture of Jeremiah Horrocks at work. In the nearby village stands the church Jeremiah Horrocks attended. It celebrates his achievements with stained glass windows, including one showing him at work. Public viewing opportunities were set up for the day in the church grounds and the crowds gathered around the various telescopes. Oh, on the bottom right hand. Yes. And this plaque hanging in the church recalls Horrocks' achievements for all generations. We've been watching the transit of Venus this morning as the planet passed between the Earth and the Sun. It was first witnessed in the village of Muchhool in Lancashire in the 17th century. Our reporter Colin Sykes is there. Colin. Yes, Joe, well, this is an extremely rare event. The last transit was more than 120 years ago. All morning there have been celebrations here at St Michael's Church where Jeremiah Horrocks was a regular worshipper. And it was just a few hundred yards away from here that he was to earn an important place in astronomical history. Um, has it all been worthwhile? Yes, definitely. Because um, we've just seen the transit about 10 minutes ago, and um, it's really exciting when you can actually see the planet Venus coming into the sun, and everything that you've researched is really, you know, you see the real thing, and that's the real thing. Were you expecting? expecting it to be more or less as you saw it or do you think it might be slightly different? Um, I actually expect it to be pretty much the same because we've seen a lot of um, clips, video clips and um, the pictures as well. Yeah, we're just really grateful that um, the sun did come out. Yeah, I'm from Papua College and I live in New Zealand and I'm here on a trip to the UK. Come in, what's your reaction to what you've seen this morning? Pretty excited? Oh yes, very exciting, yep. Um, not only because we're seeing everything that we work for in real life, but also because it was the same thing that Captain Cook saw, and it was the same thing that Jeremiah Horrocks saw, and Jeremiah Horrocks was a young prodigy, so there's a connection to young people there, and um, yeah, it, it's been really good. You've come quite a long way. Yep. Yeah, we actually did the reverse trip. Um, Captain Cook was sent to Tahiti to observe the transit of Venus, and later on he discovered New Zealand. So now we're doing the reverse trip by going from New Zealand back to the UK. Yeah, it's, it's a really cool expedition. Professional astronomers and PhD students to school children from New Zealand to Talton just up the road. What are you guys up to? We're just getting ready to measure the third contact. And how are you going to do that? We're going to be using stopwatches. Excellent. Well, we're coiled springs here in Muchhul. Back to you in Greenwich. Okay. 
go and keep going, keep going. Yeah. It's great. There we go. Yes, yes. There we go. You can see it. There we go. Right on the edge there. Right on the edge. It looks like a teardrop because you can't, you can't see it. Right on the edge. That's amazing. There we go. It's pretty awesome. A tiny uh, disc of Venus passing over the Sun's disc and we saw a transit. That hasn't happened since 1882. The next time it's going to happen in eight years' time, you'll have to buy a boat because you're going to have to be in the Pacific Ocean. It's going to be fabulous to witness this one. Now, unfortunately, it's just finished, so you're going to have to wait eight years or wait another 120 years for the next one. So. Well, it looks like um, not many of us are going to be able to walk around because it really was a once-in-a-lifetime event. Anna. Sue, thank you. Back in New Zealand a few weeks later and the three school teams were welcomed at a special homecoming celebration hosted at Tolaga Bay Area School. During the homecoming celebrations, a number of speakers complimented the school teams on their achievement. For almost a year, where UNESCO, the Royal Society, the British High Commission, the British Council, the Freemasons of New Zealand, and now the Navy, have all worked together to make sure that the transit of Venus, which is so much a part of our history, captured the imagination of every man, woman and child in this country. And it did. And then that Trollinger Bay, Pakaranga High School and Nelson College for Boys were able to represent us in the most splendid way I can tell you. You have filled us with pride in the way in which you responded to the opportunities. So for us today, it is our privilege to come here and to be with you to say well done you have put your schools on the map you have made New Zealanders feel that their history is really important and you have these books the first editions of the of Cook's journals on loan for a day <laughs>
really made an enormous impression uh, of the people in the UK, people in Whitby, people around, and I'm extremely proud of everything that you did. Um, finally, I'd like to, perhaps for the final time, thank all of the sponsors. These, these things don't happen without sponsors. ...to view the change in the Venus, but luck was on our side, and we, oh, and for a whole two and a half minutes, we got to see the Chancellor of Venus. <laughs> I know we have to be brief, but there's just one other thing I'd like to comment on. Wherever we went in England, we were warmly received, and as Mrs. Harrison says, the hospitality was superb. Of the <laughs> Sarah said, this trip has been pretty amazing, and the learning curve has been steep. On behalf of us, I would like to thank the Royal Society of New Zealand, the Freemasons, the British Council of New Zealand, the British High Commission, British Airways, Apple Works, Vodafone, and all the New Zealand Navy, can't forget them, and all the other sponsors that made this trip possible. And the companions of the Royal Society, the Society has certainly widened the horizons not just of these students who travelled overseas, but of their families and communities like ours, like Pakurana and Elsie. So once again, thank you to all the sponsors. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, kia ora tātou koutou. In 2004, the Tolaga Bay Area Schools Transit of Venus team invited everyone to come to the bay to witness the 2012 transit. And so, eight years later, we came for the great event. And when we arrived, we found the whole community was involved in the celebration preparation. There were street markets held over several days, and even the local cafes and businesses experienced a boom. Two days before the transit, two traditional ocean-going walkers sailed into the bay. An impressive sight indeed. The smaller walker is a training vessel and has motor assistance available. The larger walker was soon to make a voyage across the Pacific Ocean. To meet modern official requirements, the waka do have some non-traditional technology features about them, as can be seen by the stern-mounted wind generators on the larger waka. It was certainly impressive to watch the training walker motor into the mouth of the Uawa River where it remained throughout the Transit of Venus celebrations.
In the early morning light, just a day before the transit, the New Zealand Navy vessel Rotoiti slips quietly into the bay. In the last hours before the big day, final preparations take place throughout the area. Down at Tolliga Bay's historic Long Wharf, restoration has been taking place. Now it is time to get the final preparations completed before the rededication on Transit Day. Transit Day, the 6th of June, 2012. Just before dawn, the wharf is blessed and an impressive carved panel is uncovered. The sun rises on a good day. We should see planet Venus transit the face of the sun. Several hundred delegates from the Transit of Venus Forum, Lifting Our Horizons, shared in the Tolaga Bay activities. Here they are welcomed at the Hawiti Marae. After the pofuri, the delegates joined the crowds gathered at the Tolaga Bay Wharf for the official reopening ceremony. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> 
Oh, he's right. He's, yeah, that's it. Declare the Tolaga Bay Wharf officially reopened. crowd gathered at Tolaga Bay Area School. Here all the pupils had the opportunity to view the transit and they all wore celebration t-shirts as well. A live internet feed from Hawaii was projected as a backup in case of bad weather here at Tolaga Bay. Oh, I don't 
this large and impressive mural was created by local artists and pupils at Tolaga Bay Area School. Each pupil is represented somewhere on the wall. It will certainly be a feature of the school for many years to come. Several time capsules had been prepared by the pupils. A special wall was constructed for their placement and different capsules will be opened at stages leading up to the next transit of Venus in 120 years time. By mid-afternoon the telescopes are largely abandoned. Only a few enthusiasts remain in the hope of the cloud cover parting and the transit egress becoming visible. <laughs> However, the internet feed from Hawaii continues to clearly show the transit's final stages. A final event at Tolaga Bay was a performance by the school's national award-winning drama students. They staged their own production based around the exploits of Captain James Cook. Just as you are. May I be so bold as to say that your beauty 
Let me speak to him then. I do not wish for us to be separated so soon. Tell me to see, James. I must admit, the open water fascinates me. Tell me of your house. What's it like there? It's like a million miles of my book soup. This is a battle between sand and sea. The fruit of waves crashing and caressing your hair like a sweet the sand, as white as the clouds, and the salty air that brushes your cheek. It is heaven, but no beauty can compete. For your beauty radiates this land. 